Another concept would be a controller, and while this is uh, optional in PRISM, it, it is very helpful, very useful. Um, if you use it as a central point for controlling how views are shown. In the demo app, uh, we're going to see this implemented as a controller for each module. And the basic idea behind the controller is that it's responsible for in view injection. Um, it works with the container and the region manager to create and initialize the view modules, create the views in their data context, load the views into regions uh, using view injection, and manage and remove views from regions. We also have the concept of service. Most people um, are familiar with this in development. Um, a user provide functionality, and it may or may not be implemented as modules. Uh, logging and data access are two good examples in the demo. Um, and it's simply a way or an easy way to incorporate legacy code into a PRISM application. Now to the two concepts that seem to cause people the most trouble. Uh, the first one would be dependency injection um, and its associated service location uh, classes in PRISM. Uh, DI is basically a set of principles that enable you to develop loosely coupled code. And in PRISM there are two um, containers that enable this. One is called Unity and the other call, is called MEF. We're going to be using Unity in the demo. What are DI containers used for? Um, in uh, PRISM, the most common uses are for registering types and then also for resolving types and their dependencies. PRISM itself is built upon these. Uh, now this is um, when you're using a DI container, instead of placing the responsibility for the creation of new objects and their dependencies, placing that responsibility on the person who is using it, on the class that is using it, you are in, instead removing that responsibility to a uh, portion of the framework that is going to keep track of those objects that is responsible for creating new ones, um, because it is aware and capable of creating that object and its, all of its dependencies. If you're unfamiliar with dependency injection containers and inversion of control, which is the uh, uh, related concept, there are references at the end of this uh, presentation which will help you. Um, there's a video presentation that's very good and there's also a reference to a book that is very good about uh, learning about dependency injection. The service locator class is an all alternative way to reference uh, the dependency injection container that's contained that is contained within Prism. Um, it is a global static class that uh, allows you to uh, gain access to that uh, container instead of having to pass references to the container around throughout your application. So here is a um, example of the architecture of our demo that um, references the various concepts that we've been talking about. Within our WPF project we have a shell which is the window. In that window we're going to define one or more regions. Our application is going to reference a dependency injection container, in this case it's Unity, and this is part of Prism, which is going to keep track of all the various pieces of a prism, all of the objects that it needs to control and their dependencies. It is going to reference within prism the module catalog, which we talked about, the region manager, which we mentioned, the event aggregator, which we mentioned, and it's also going to um, keep track of the logging facade, which is uh, something that prism uses an interface to be able to um, log various messages. We're going to make use of that throughout the application. I'll show you that in the demo. In our application, we're going to provide a logging service and a model service for data. And then we're going to add a module um, that is going to contain a controller that is going to be able to uh, put together a view and a view model. The view model is going to uh, access some data and the controller is going to take the view and put it into the region. So let's get to the demo and show the setup, the bootstrapping, and uh, the design of the shell and, 
adding the various infrastructure module and services. Here we have a WPF application that has been modified slightly. What I did is when I came in, into this, I went into the app.xaml and removed the um, service URI, startup URI, excuse me, which was um, indicating which window should be used for the application to start up. We're going to be um, doing some things with that window to be able to identify it as the shell and uh, it wasn't appropriate to have that in the uh, XAML of the app XAML itself. I renamed main window to be shell window and um, right now it has no content but this is going to be our shell that we're going to be adding some regions to. In the app.xaml code I overrode the on startup method and referenced in that a bootstrapper um, class and it's the bootstrapper class that is going to be initializing prism for us. So how do we add prism um, binaries to our solution to be able to do that? Well here's one of our first uh, tips that I have for using Visual Studio combined with Prism, and that is NuGet. If you're unfamiliar with NuGet, that can be obtained by going under your Tools menu to the Extensions and Updates, and looking online, <coughs> searching for NuGet, and downloading and installing um, the NuGet Package Manager not the one uh, up above there, but the NuGet Package Manager. What NuGet Package Manager does for you is um, rather than in um, previously where you would download the binaries, potentially try to install them in uh, on your machine or copy them and put them in a library file in your solution, the NuGet Package Manager will uh, go for uh, go and find the appropriate binaries, install them in your um, project for you, and actually uh, help you manage them um, across all the projects in your solution. So let me show you, um, after installing NuGet, what you can do, you'll get an option for managing NuGet packages for a solution. And it brings up a somewhat similar interface, but in this case, it shows you uh, packages that you can install on your application. Now, I have already installed uh, Prism uh, and uh, Unity extensions were the two that I identified um, that I wanted to install for my application. And when I did that, it installed a couple of others for me. It actually picked up the common service locator in Unity. But if I show you what happens when you click manage, it gives you a interface which allows you to pick which of your projects in your solution that you want to add or remove um, various packages from. We added Prism to both um, our demo UI and to this logging project that I uh, have included in my solution. I picked um, for my logging solution log for net just because it was simple. Um, not going to say too much about that, but it was easy to add uh, Log4Net uh, to my uh, logging project by uh, using NuGet as well. What NuGet will do, it, you'll notice that you do get a packages.config file added to your projects. Um, that is just NuGet's way of keeping track of the projects that have been, or the packages that have been added to the project. Um, so you shouldn't be surprised to see that. But once I've done that, it adds uh, references uh, within your uh, project to uh, Prism, uh, Prism Interactivity. Um, we picked um, Unity extension, so it, it adds that library. It picks up service location, which you may recall we us mentioning in conjunction with the uh, uh, 
dependency injection container. Uh, it includes Unity, which is our DI container, and Unity configuration. So those are the um, Microsoft uh, Prism references you should expect to see added to your uh, project. Thank <music> you.